Okay, so what I have here is the inventory problem. Um, the example, it's in the bonus materials and a bunch of my different materials. Um, and I'm just gonna put it into Excel. So if you haven't gone through the solution and actually written out that solution or checked that solution, this isn't gonna make a lot of sense to you. So I encourage you to do that before you watch how to put it into Excel. Um, this is only one of many possibilities of how to implement this in Excel. But with an inventory problem, it has some very specific um, twist to it to actually making the Excel work, okay? So in any Excel, no matter what we're doing, we're always gonna start by inputting our, um, basically, well, I like to start with the given information. Then I like to make sure that I put in my decision variables, then my objective, and then my constraints. And all constraints are, remember, is left-hand side versus that right-hand side. There's definitely, there's a bunch of different formatting things that you could do, <coughs> but really with um, Excel, it doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to work. So with an inventory problem, there's a couple of key things. First off, ending inventory is not a variable. You cannot define it as being, hey, Excel, you get to change this um, cell because it's actually defined. That's why we've got that I1 equals constraints. That means that you're going to leave it out when you define your variables. It also means that you need to enforce that the ending inventory is greater than or equal to zero as a separate constraint. So let's input what we have here. So we have six months worth of information. So month one, month two, okay. The given information I have is demand. Um, so it pulls our demand is 300, 400, 600, 300, 450, and then 550. I have that unit cost of production. So that's 20, 35, 25, 55, 60, and 50. Oops. And our holding cost in this problem was not a per unit holding cost, it was a fixed holding cost. So I've got that fixed holding cost and it's $200 per month. I don't actually need to um, write this whole, like write 200 out each time, uh, but it'll just make things a little bit you know, more general in the sense that if it was a per unit holding cost, you would write those out as well. And then we have our other information. So things they gave us, they told us that the beginning inventory was 60. They told us that our max production was 725 units, okay? And so then we have those decision variables. So because we've got things by month, I'm just gonna kind of add on to this little chart here. So two of our decision variables were binary. We needed to know if we were gonna store anything in ending inventory and that was a binary variable. And we need to know if we're gonna produce in the month, or just produce question mark. So these are both binary variables. Um, and then we need to know the amount to produce. And that was not a binary variable. And then we have our ending inventory. And so our ending inventory is one that we kind of define as a decision variable, but it turns out it's not really a decision variable. We actually define it in the constraints as to what it's equal to. So I'm just gonna you know, color these so that they are um, differentiated for the sake of just like these are my binary or these are my decision variables. Ending inventory, again, it's not actually going to be um, its own decision variable. So to define that ending inventory, because now, oops, actually, sorry. Um, so we have our decision variables, we have this special ending inventory. We all usually wanna put in our objective function first. So our objective in this case was total cost. In this case, our cost is that unit cost times, well, what did we produce in each month? And that fixed holding cost times, did we even store it in inventory? So we can use a sum product there to take those unit costs and multiply them by the amount being produced. Plus, I can do another sum product, although I don't have to do a sum product, I could just do 200 times the sum of whether or not I store things in inventory, but again, I like to do the most general kind of approach here. 
and that gives me my total cost. So this is what I'm going to try to minimize, right? This is my good old objective function. And so then we build our constraints from there. So the first constraint we had was the actual ending inventory constraint. So ending inventory in month one is equal to, well, what did I begin with? I begin with 60, I produce whatever I produce in month one, and then what goes out is going to be that uh, demand from month one, and that gives you my ending inventory. It's coming up negative because we don't usually fill in something for our decision variables. Um, Excel is going to do that later, so some of our numbers are going to be a little bit screwy while we do them. In month two, we're starting with month one, we're adding whatever gets produced in month two, and we're subtracting off that demand, 400. And the reason um, I like setting up my variables and everything kind of in the same direction as I give information is that now I can just click and drag that one through. I couldn't drag the first one because it references beginning inventory, but I could drag the rest, okay? For the amount produced, um, I have the fact that this amount produced needs to be at most 725, but it's actually tied to whether or not we even produce. So I could do another constraint kind of down below for this, or I'm just going to insert a couple of columns here. Get rid of the fact that this stuff is not going to be decision variables. I just want to say, hey, that amount I produce has to be less than or equal to my maximum production. And that maximum production is going to be just our 725. And I'm going to anchor that because I want to use that same 725 in every one of my constraints, but times whether or not we produced in that month. I'm going to drag that down. Okay. We also had for ending inventory that is, again, determined there's a maximum for it. Now, they didn't give us that set maximum, but the whole point is, is that it's tied to whether or not we even open our warehouse and therefore pay that $200 fixed cost. So we need to make sure that it's tied to that max storage, um, which is a logical upper bound. So they didn't give us that maximum, which is why if you look at that solution, I used 2600. 2600 is too high of a number. It was just the sum of all of the demands. Because I can only produce 725 in a month and I'm going to end up using up some, I'm never actually going to reach 2600. So 2600 is that idea that, hey, if I produced everything I wanted in a single month, how much might I need? It's just an arbitrarily large number. And I want to multiply it by that binary of whether or not I'm even going to store something in inventory and drag that down. Okay. Um, so my other constraint that I had in here was that we're only able to reproduce four out of the six months. So there's lots of different ways I can put that in here. One of the ways a lot of people end up doing constraints is they'll just kind of go down below after they've set up their decision variables and they'll write out a constraint like um, only produce four of six months. And this is the most typical way of doing it. So left hand side versus right hand side of this constraint. The left hand side of this was the sum of all of our did we produce or did we not variables. And we needed this to be less than or equal to four. Now, again, so if I go into um, data and I go into solver, um, it, this is not actually going to work. So I'm going to do it right now. So total cost, I want to minimize it by changing my variable cells. These are my variable cells. Okay going to add the constraints that that amount produced has to be less than or equal to my maximum production, that I want my ending inventory to be less than or equal to that, do I even store it, that I want my left hand side here to be less than or equal to right hand side. And then I have to actually add in the fact that these two cells or sets of cells are in fact binary. So I hit OK there. I want to say that it's simplex. I want to make sure I go into options and I don't have this ignore integer constraints selected. Sometimes by default, Excel has a selected. That's going to mess us up too. And I just want to hit solve. And it's 
yay, I found a solution, but it's going to give me a bad solution. It gives me zeros for everything. And the reason it does this is because I haven't forced it to make this ending inventory positive. So I also need ending inventory to be positive. So you, there's lots of ways to do this. You can add it anywhere in your spreadsheet. I've got this extra constraint down below. So maybe I'll just add ending inventory positive down below. And I'm going to do this for each month. So just copy paste that down. Um, and I just want to reference. So that left hand side is just whatever my ending inventory is, which is why I don't actually have to put it down below. I could do another couple columns like in the M column here, just say it's greater than or equal to lots of different ways of doing this. But for right now, let's just copy this down. So I've, and all of this is doing is referencing up to the actual like cells as we define them. And we just want to say greater than or equal to here for all of these months. And these all have to be greater than or equal to zero. And so if I go into solver, it's nice. Everything stayed there. I'm going to add an extra constraint. And I'm just going to say, hey, these inventory values all have to be greater than or equal to, believe it or not, I could actually type in zero and that would work, but I'll reference this zero here and hit OK. And now I'm going to solve it. And we'll see our solution. If we look at this, we store inventory every month but the last month. We produce in the first three months and in the very last month. We produce the max amount in those first three months, carry it through, and 630, we produce 635 in the end. We can see here, you know, we end up storing 810, 935 is the most we end up storing. But then in that last month, we don't produce, so we didn't incur that $200 cost. So we, end, or sorry, we didn't, not that we didn't produce, but we don't hold anything in inventory. So that max there is zero. Um, and this is what ensures that we satisfy demand, right? Uh, the fact that we made sure that our ending inventory was positive uh, ensures that we're actually covering enough to satisfy our demand each month.